Electricity is generated by dirty polluting coal, so EVs are still dirty pollutants. The EV is not really green. Have you heard these? Have you ever wondered how true they are, if, if at all? Well, Dave Takes It On delves into the generation of electricity in the UK. Well, there is no answer, and that's a shock. The grid is an immensely complex entity that is never static. Energy arrives into the grid from a variety of sources with constantly changing. If a cloud, for example, goes across the sun, then solar PV farms see a drop in output. Likewise, a leap when the cloud clears. The wind is never constant, always varying. So does the output of wind farms and turbines. Gas-fired power stations claim to produce the bulk of electricity overall. PV panels do not work at night. Some days there is no wind. Well, we can only look at snapshots and overall production. So, hugely different is uh, consumption. It's so variable. At 3am in the morning, little is being used in an average house, while at 5 to 6pm, house consumption rockets to a peak as people get home and turn on lights, TVs, ovens, washing machines, computers. Business often works daytime hours, shops and offices, while many factories work around the clock. Where well, there is limited storage, some of which has been around for decades, like hydroelectric, where water can be pumped uphill to a lake or reservoir when there's plenty of electricity available overnight, and water is released through turbines generating electricity when the grid is running short. Or more recently, Battery storage is gaining ground, where electricity is stored in massive, massive lithium-ion batteries when there is plenty around and released when needed. And there are a limited number of emergency generators when needed. These can be things, strangely, like the meteorological office in Exeter, Devon, which uses absolutely huge amounts of electricity, enough almost for a whole city, and they run computers and simulations in massively air-conditioning buildings, and they run 24-7, 365 days a year, because the programmes cannot be interrupted. These are modelling climate change, amongst other things. Well, they obviously have instant battery backup of their own, in case of a power cut, and they have huge generators capable of running them totally. So in the event of a power failure, the batteries take over for the few minutes it takes to run the generators up to full power. It's all automatic, at which point the Met Office is totally independent off-grid. Well, they need to run these regularly to ensure they'll work when needed. And during those times, the Met Office is off-grid, so local demand drops dramatically. It's like losing a city. If the grid ever sees a serious shortage developing, they will go and ask the Met, Meteorology Office, to run their generators for an extended period of time to drop the overall load on the grid and allow them to cope in what otherwise could be a blackout situation. In these times, the grid then pays the Met as a generator. Well, finally, we're also connected to Europe and Scandinavia by undersea cables. And we're able to buy electricity if we need to and sell it if we don't. It is a very complex system. I mean, between the generators and the users, us, is an army of engineers and technicians who try to balance the two, since the grid cannot store electricity within the grid itself or in the wires. Well, their job is to ensure that enough goes in at any one time to match what we're taking out. And they do an amazing job. Power cuts are very rare in the UK, apart from storm damage, where the grid is damaged. Much of the time, those engineers and technicians are guessing, trying to anticipate what we're using, and they get it, they get really quite good at it. They're generally right. Well, to get back to the original question, is electricity generating generation dirty? Well, I've monitored the grid for myself for extended periods of time, and there's a plethora of sources that allow real-time monitoring. During the time I wrote this article, the following was occurring ignoring a very small trade back and forth with Europe of about 3%. Well, today, 3rd of October 2023, electricity from coal, 0.0%, gas, 8.8%, solar, 14.2%, wind, 58%, hydroelectric, 1.6%, nuclear, 12.5%, biomass, 2.2%. Well, if we total that up into three groups, we get renewables, 78.8%, 
Fossil fuels, 8.8%. Others, that includes nuclear, 4.8%. So over the week, that makes renewables 43.6%, fossil fuels 31.7%, others 22.3%. So over the last year, coal was 0.9%. Gas 36.2, solar 4.7%, wind 30.2%, hydroelectric 1.2%, nuclear 15.2%, and biomass 4.7%. So over the year, renewables was 36.2, fossil fuel 37.2, and others 19.9. So the actual answer is that coal is rapidly dwindling and likely to be completely finished in the next few years. Anyone who says we burn coal to power our EVs, just plain wrong. Well, the interesting figures are the fossil fuel and renewable balance, almost exactly the same over the entire of last year. In fact, we could split our entire generation to roughly 40% fossil, 40% renewables and 20% other, mainly nuclear. What's also interesting is the spot figure right now with 60% wind, 12% solar PV. Our wind generation is a massive contributor to our national grid, and wind is something we have plenty of. Somewhere in the UK, from the northernmost point, Caithness in Highland, down to the southernmost, the Lizard in Cornwall, and from the North Sea in the east to the western coast of Ireland, there is wind powering our grid. And no, there were no totally calm days with absolutely no wind anywhere in the UK in the last year. Well, the overall picture is a bit of a sad one. On many days, we have more than enough renewables and nuclear to run the entire grid. But for governmental reasons, we choose to shut down the wind and PV farms and favour gas-fired power stations to supply the bulk of our electricity. Well, this is a scandal, especially because the price of electricity to the grid in the UK is tied to the price of electricity provided by gas-fired power stations. In other words, totally fixed. Well, I am going to investigate the cost of electricity from what generators get paid to what we pay and who gets the best deal out of our electricity and well, I already bet it's not us. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.